Welcome everybody to this week's kind of a my stream and Wonder Studios update combined into one today, and we have a special reason for that. It's going to make kind of everybody excited. Um, a few of you have met Paul Lauer. He's on the call today. Put your hand up, Paul, so we can see who you are. Hey, um, hey. I, I think Paul's only been on one update video before, uh, or maybe even not. I'm not even sure he was. Was he guys? Was he on update video before? <laughs> Hard to remember. Yeah. I think so. My app. My avatar, I think, made it somehow. Right, yes. Yeah, you were in the car somewhere. But... So uh, exciting news on, on both fronts for Wonder Studios, Calculated, and as well as my stream. So Paul Lauer, as of this week, has officially uh, signed on as a Wonder Studios partner. He is one of us now. The five Woo! people you Woo! see on this call are <laughs> the, uh, the leadership team at Wonder Studios. And uh, gosh... If you guys know who Paul is, it, we thought Dan was awesome. I mean, Dan is amazing. Yeah. We thought, in the past, we yeah. thought Dan was amazing. Um, Paul, Paul has basically everything you could ever want except one thing. Oh, what's that one thing? He doesn't really have a very good sense of humor, I've noticed. <laughs> yeah, right. That's why Dan's here. Okay. <laughs> Just the comic relief. So all the investors are going, okay, fine, 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 fine. Who is Paul? What's he all about? So a couple of you saw a video uh, last week and were really excited about him. So when you came on at, uh, to the team and were kind of toying with the idea of joining us as partners, there's some stuff I didn't know about you, which once I found out, I was even more excited, mm -hmm. which is, uh, we mentioned it once in a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, was that, of course, you know, we're doing calculated, calculated script writer is Ann Peacock, Ann Peacock is a script writer for Narnia, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and it just so happens but Paul, what did you do on Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Paul? Uh, well, we we helped Disney run the marketing campaign. So my company, I mentioned earlier, Motive Entertainment, was hired by Disney. Um, we worked basically with the entire marketing and distribution department to see that movie to success. Um, it was a year and a half long campaign. It was probably the most fun we've had on a campaign uh, i got to see the inner workings of disney the disney empire and how they uh, launch a franchise we would have weekly meetings or no monthly meetings called synergy meetings and i would go to the studio and in that room would be 30 to 50 people from every division at disney from the the movie studio side to the theme parks to the merchandising and everybody was in there saying, how are we going to maximize the impact of this property Chronicles wow. of Narnia? And um, it really taught me a lot. Um, I was, I was the one outside uh, entity that was able to attend those meetings, at least from the marketing and distribution side. Um, and it was a great success. We helped not only with the, uh, the rollout here in America, including helping with things like Walmart connections. I, at the time I knew the president of Walmart and I'm amazingly here, this big studio Disney was having some trouble getting a good fit with Walmart. And I said, well, I know the CEO, could I just reach out to him and see if I can help a little? And they were, they're like, okay. And that <laughs> turned out to be a great, a great thing at the end of the day, relationships. I have a lot of good relationships. So, um, yeah, that's what we did. And um, I have so many great Narnia stories. We'll save those for another day. But trust me, uh, we'll have a lot of fun talking about Narnia, especially with Anne. <laughs> Paul is an extreme strategist and marketer. And we're going to get into some of that background. So I just wanted to, to ask you a little bit of background on what makes you kind of a, a great key player for my stream. What have you done in the past, Paul? Well, let's see. I was a Boy Scout. Um, <laughs> I grew up in Hollywood. I've been in the entertainment industry officially for 20 years. Um, Motive Entertainment, the company I founded, has worked on some amazing films. Um, all told, the films we've worked on have done $4.2 billion at the box office. We can't claim uh, all of that success, but we were certainly part of that success, and we saw the anatomy of success. Uh, but for the last at least 20 years, I've been super frustrated as a consumer, feeling like Hollywood didn't really understand me and wasn't serving me and my family the way I was looking for in, in entertainment. 
And, um, and so for at least that long, I've been saying, man, somebody's got to come up with a better way to uh, deliver the content that target audiences are looking for instead of just having the Hollywood way be the only way and missing big chunks of America and big chunks of consumers. So on the film front, film production front, we were able to be part of films that started to do that, started serving target audiences, niche audiences, and and also crossing over to bigger audiences. But on the streaming content consumption side, um, I've just been like, man, who's going to get this right? And so a few years ago, I started working with a team of guys and gals um, to build a streaming platform that would be a lot better at curating content for specific consumers and um, serving me and my family the way we want to be served. And then I happen to reconnect with Dan Cobb, who I've known for 20 years plus, And he said, hey, we're doing the same thing. And I looked at what you guys had, and I so respect Dan. And I said, you know what? They've got stuff that we're missing. I'm going to jump on board with them. And that's what brought brought me to you guys. And not that you didn't respect us. You just had no idea who we were. That's all. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. No, but I mean – I was already deep into understanding how you license content, how you stream content, the technology, where are the gaps, what are the big guys doing, what are smaller players doing. And so I really had a lot of knowledge, but we hadn't built a lot yet. And that's what got me excited about what you guys are doing, because there's a lot of pieces already in place. Yeah. Well, and I wasn't going to mention this on the call, but, uh, you know, some of you, I always like to re-mention things because some investors have never seen some of the videos and so they need to catch up on what's going on. But but Dan Cobb, uh, when he came into the company, he actually brought patents and technology, live technology for my stream that can be integrated. So, uh, and, and Paul and Dan have known each other for years. So they're kind of a great fit for working together on this team. Um, Paul, you had, you were in a conversation uh, a few weeks ago or maybe about a week and a half ago or so. And you said something I thought was just really, uh, interesting because I'm a very pragmatic person. Like, you know, what do we do next? How long is it going to take to do it? And uh, et cetera. And so you said, uh, when you're part of the team, I, I want to know what do you bring to the table each week? You know, uh, what are you contributing? What are you doing? What are you working on? What is your deliverable? I just want you to talk about that mindset as far as, uh, you know, being in this company is involved. Yeah. So I'm a dreamer, like, like everybody on this call, um, I'm a visionary. I've got more ideas than I could possibly ever complete in this lifetime. I'd need a hundred lifetimes to do all the ideas I have. But I found after 30 years of doing business that the only way an idea becomes reality is focus, is just stripping out all the other stuff and drilling down on that first brick of the wall and the next brick and the next brick. You have to, you have to kind of come out of the clouds and land on earth and get real physical, real tangible. And it's not as fun. It's a lot more fun to float in the clouds and, and just dream. Um, And so it's really hard for visionaries to do that. And I find myself sometimes wanting to stay in the clouds and other times wanting to get my feet on the ground. And I think coming into this team with a lot of visionaries, the best thing I can do is to help all of us, really get our feet on the ground and accomplish very tangible, specific things week to week, make sure we're building, make sure we're following through on what we told our investors we were going to do. Awesome. I love it. That's why I like you so much, Paul. Paul, I was, I was just thinking, I, I, I was actually shocked when I went to your IMDB um, page and, and looked at all the different movies you've done. And I'm not so sure everybody in this, you know, the, the people watching this video are going to do that. So can you mention some of the other movies that are like highlights for you that you enjoyed working on? Yeah, well, my greatest claim to fame is that I worked with Mel Gibson for a couple of years on his passion project, literally the passion of the Christ. Um, we built a new model on that movie that's been um, used over and over again by us and by many others. Uh, we won a top 50 marketer of the year award from ad age, you know, the most respected advertising publication. Um, and, um, 
we built a huge database, uh, some of which I'm hoping uh, we can use to to stimulate interest and growth. But that was that was quite a while ago. And the good news is Mel Gibson is talking about the sequel and looks like he may be doing it sooner than later. Uh, it's much anticipated. But the success of that movie pretty much got us um, every studio calling us. And so we've worked with every major studio. Uh, some of my favorite projects include Polar Express, a movie that I watch again and again every mm-hmm. year. Uh, a project mm-hmm. I did a few years ago with Jamie Foxx, Michael B. Jordan, and Brie Larson called Just Mercy. Not as well known as the other movies, but an amazing heartfelt story. Um, Gil Netter is a producer of that. He's a good friend of mine, and, and we're talking about doing some stuff, hopefully, with One Door Studios. So, yeah, did, lots did of films. Go to the IMDb. Yeah. Did you mention, um, oh, why can't I think of the name of it? Jack. Yeah, the Shack. the Shack. Yeah, The Shack we did with uh, Sam Worthington, Octavia Spencer. Uh, that was a Gil Netter production, actually. Gil's, Gil's my surfing buddy, by the way. I hope I'm yeah. not out of line mentioning his name yeah. on this call. He's also the guy that produced Life of Pi. Oh, my and God. And many movies. That's such um, good stuff, man. Such good stuff. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just amazing. Well, you know, um, I know we're, we're going to go long here. I just, a question about Narnia. Was I when you were describing it um narnia i guess the story despite being a, a c.s lewis was kind of almost like an unknown story in as far as a global story is concerned and there was there was this concern about getting a, a new un, a new universe uh marketed properly am i wrong in saying that no it was one of the reasons there was resistance at walmart you know they were like uh well we don't we don't really know this. Like we know Lord of the Rings, but like, we're not even sure. Like, what is this Darnia thing again? I remember reading the books as a kid in yeah. school. So I, I already knew about it, but um, yeah, there was some concern about how much it was going to connect. And like any new franchise, um, you know, when you're taking books to, to a movie, you just never know for sure if it's going to work. Um, but it, oh. it did work. You know, it, it fired on all cylinders and it was a, as we say, a four quadrant movie where it reached all the age groups. It had something for every age group. And uh, interestingly, though, the sequel and the third movie, the second and third movie didn't do as well as the first one. And that's another thing we'll talk about another day, because I saw why I saw the anatomy of success and the anatomy of falling short of success and what the difference was. Well, the total uh, on that film on Narnia, I believe, uh, across uh, globally with all ancillaries, was over a billion dollars, wasn't it? Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So it's it, a great example of how well um, films do foreign when you get the mix right. There's a lot of American films that do really well here and then they don't travel. We say they don't travel, meaning they don't do well overseas. And, um, I'll tell you what, our calculated movie is going to travel. It is going to do so well. And uh, if there's one thing, guys, that has attracted me to you guys and what you're doing, it's it's calculated. Like, I am so pumped. Hmm. Um, I was showing calculated to a producer friend who's done some great movies, and um, she was blown away. She was blown away by the deck, just saying, wow, that's really good IP intellectual property Mm -hmm. well that's amazing well i I don't want to make this video any longer uh but i want to open it up just you know john dan jay you guys any questions uh for paul i'd like to just welcome paul officially as a friend just love you paul and so thankful that there was a day where i just had a feeling and just said you know we have a we have a big job ahead of us and just felt this need to text and say we need paul and uh just so thankful you're here i remember the first time i met you uh, it was actually at the red carpet for um, the Passion of the Christ in Detroit, of all places. And uh, you were there as representative for the team. And uh, like you said, you got to actually get the job done. And I had such a passion my whole life for someone to do movies like this. And to see you in the front lines and the marketing side and pulling the team together, inventing what I would call influencer engagement, uh, the father of that is, is it would be Paul. It, 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 there are many who will claim it. I was there to see it happen. 
And just want to thank you for joining the team. Excited about where we're going. Uh, you're, you're a brother and a friend, and we're super, super happy to have you on the team. Right on. <clears throat> Finally, By another the way, surfer among us. <laughs> I, I wanted to say one quick thing. The other thing that's really exciting for me is, um, yeah, this is a longer story, but in the studios, there's always a joke between production and marketing. So the production side are the ones making the movie. The marketing is obviously distributing the movie, and they always blame each other if the movie fails. And usually the head of the studio, the production side, is pulled from the marketing department. So when you go up the ladder, you, you might go to the top of the marketing department. Your next stop is to run the studio because marketing drives everything, right? You can make a great film and nobody's going to see it unless the marketing is done right. You can even kind of make a crappy film. And if the marketing's really good, <laughs> <laughs> it can still do a little business. Yeah. But, but you're dead without marketing. And in this studio that we have, one of our studios, Two of us, Dan and I, come from the marketing discipline, and that's critical because yeah. most studios have none, right, except for the big studios. Smaller studios usually have no marketing people at all. They're all production people, and here, 40% yeah. of our team is marketing. Yeah. You guys, you know, guys, for those who don't know, out there we got guys who have marketed all these movies that Paul mentioned, plus Dan, who's marketed Chick-fil-A, Papa John's. Uh, Little Caesars, Quicken Loans, Rocket Mortgage, and I can't even name the rest. Of them. And lots of other movies too. That he's he's got. Is that Jay? <laughs> he did the Hobbit, right? Hobbit. He did, he did oh, guy, something yeah. on it. Something yeah. So, I mean, anyway, I, I think this, this should still instill a lot of confidence uh, in our investors right now. I know I have a lot more confidence than I've ever had in this with these uh, amazing players with us. So that's all we got for today. Which, if that's not enough, you know, I don't know. What else to give you? But uh, thanks well, for is, uh, is Paul going to uh, resolve the WGA strike? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little low down on my list, John, because there's a few things we need to do for One Door Studios. Yeah. But as soon as we're done fixing everything, we'll 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 deal with the WGA. <laughs> yeah, if oh. only, right? <clears throat> nice. no. Awesome, guys! Fantastic, Paul. So glad to have you on our team. And uh, thank you to all your investors who joined us on this call and who continue to watch these updates. And uh, it's always all about you guys because uh, you guys are the fans, the, the investors, and some of you guys are actually some of the creators in our project. So thanks to Dan and his amazing uh, Discord and AI stuff. So, all right, guys, yeah. we'll see you again real soon on another update. Thank you all. Good stuff. Good job.